He also convincingly argued that all heavenly bodies move in perfect uniform circles. They really don't. Therefore, to draw the planetary motions along Aristotelian lines, astronomers had to recreate a cosmos of complicated circles, moving around on top of other complicated circles. This roundabout system of epicycles was bizarre, complex to the point of being almost incomprehensible. But it saved the appearances, which was scientific double talk to justify fitting round pegs into square holes. And besides that, in many practical ways, it actually worked. For example, it more or less predicted the positions of stars and planets. It aided navigation. And perhaps most important, it helped astronomers to cast royal horoscopes, which was a vital component in their job security. Indeed, the Aristotelian view with the Earth at the center of a universe in which all motion was uniformly circular satisfied almost everyone. Almost everyone except Nikolai Copernicus, who around 1500 wrote an intellectual tornado of a book, The Revolution of Heavenly Orbs. Within these pages were ideas powerful enough to uproot and send the Earth hurtling through space, tossing aside the very foundation of physical science in the process. In one otherwise innocent chapter, Copernicus recreated the universe. He put the sun, not the earth, at its center. And he put the earth as if it were a mere planet in orbit around the sun. The Copernican universe was an idea as revolutionary as any before or since. In fact, from Copernicus onward, the word revolution has meant radical change. Yet even while attempting to overthrow the Aristotelian stronghold, Copernicus retained that ingrained practice of the astronomer's trade to save the appearances. All the planets did orbit the sun, he ventured, and not in perfect circles at uniform rates. However, in order to save appearances, he ventured no further. <laughs>